Ariana Grande fans, this is the review that you have been waiting for. Hey you, what up? Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I'm Mariam and today I am going to be reviewing, testing out, swatching, applying to my face, the new brand from Ariana Grande, Rem Beauty. Okay, I just got a PR package in the mail. I'm gonna give you guys my honest review. I actually have not seen any reviews. I don't watch reviews of products because I am a reviewer myself, so I do not want my opinion to be swayed or tainted in any way. So this is going to be a Team Truth style review, dipping my fingers into everything and giving you guys the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help us make up gods. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Remember to subscribe if you aren't already and hit that notification bell so you can see all my Wednesdays and Sundays videos. And now let's do it. Rem Beauty, Ariana Grande. Here she comes. Okay, so just got the package in the mail. I opened it up like maybe 20 minutes ago and I filmed kind of like my first impression on boxing. I received just a few items from the line, not every single thing, but in this booklet here, you can tell that there's several products that were a part of this first launch that they're calling chapter one and they're referring to it as the ultraviolet launch. So you can see here that the theme is very violet. There's some violet products like a highlighter topper and also a lip gloss. We have several items and I received like one from each of the products. There's an eyeshadow palette and the one that I have is in the shade Baby Doll, which is basically Ari's signature neutral mattes and shimmers palette. $24. It is six shades. The packaging, honestly, off the bat, it looks like something that I've seen before, but then again, when I touch it, when I open it, it feels a little bit more luxurious than I was expecting. I did see some pictures online and online it doesn't have as much of an impression as it does in person. In person, I definitely think the packaging is kind of cool. It's kind of futuristic. It definitely feels fresh. It definitely feels new. We also have two other palettes in this collection. Midnight Snack, which is a cool tone mattes and shimmers and Principessa, which is a warm brown mattes and shimmers palette. Next up, we have the Interstellar Highlighter Topper in the shade Miss Mercury, which is a warm champagne. So this is $22 and it is one of 10 shades. It's supposed to be weightless, multi-dimensional topper for your cheeks, eyes, and body. Infused with vegetable derived emollients. Okay, next up we have the utmost importance plumping lip gloss in clear. This one is $17, but in the booklet here, I can see that there are colored plumping glosses and there are nine of those. One of them is this lavender one. Also, we have two different types of mascaras. We have a volumizing mascara, which is the one that I have. Shade is midnight black. And the other one is a lengthening mascara. I did take a look at the wand and I gotta say, I like it. It is not too gimmicky. It looks like a traditional wand with just like a bit of interest, but nothing too crazy. $15 for that. We also have a marker eyeliner. Looks like a felt tip to create that signature Ariana Grande cat eye style. And this one is $19. Okay, it's kind of an interesting uh, price structure. Considering that the eyeshadow palette is 24, considering that everything is kind of like in the teen or $20 range, $19 for a felt tip marker seems like a lot, you know? I would expect that from a brand that charges probably $30 or more for eyeshadows. But anyway, that's just something that I'm noticing. We also have Kohl eyeliner pencils, three of those. I don't seem to have that. Those are $17. And and last but not least, this is the thing that kind of like excited me the most off the bat. We have some lashes. Lashes are $16. There are two styles and the style that I have here is called Eternally Meowing. Uh, that's perfect for me. And I do really like the shape a lot. It's very flared, but also wispy enough, but also crisscross enough that it's interesting. I imagine it'll be very flattering on a lot of different eye shapes. Let's go ahead and start swatching. Again, I will remind you, I have not watched any reviews. My opinion is my opinion only. The only thing I have heard is that people were a little bit underwhelmed by just like the general look of the packaging and the products. And I gotta agree, I was kind of in that same boat because after seeing what Rihanna did with Fenty and even Selena Gomez did with Rare Beauty, celebrity makeup lines are, the expectations are high for celebrity makeup lines, is what I'm saying basically. And I definitely think that Ariana Grande and her makeup artist, Daniel Chinchilla, they have sort of created this very specific makeup movement that I think is very influential for the Gen Z generation and not just the Gen Zs, for all of us. I feel like Ari's 
whole look and all the looks that she does are they're reflective of the current makeup styles the makeup trends that are in right now so i definitely think she has a point of view it is unique to her and it is very very influential heck i'm influenced by it i know my little sister is really influenced by it she is like so excited about this review she's already texted me a hundred times but anyway let's get into this first thing i want to do is maybe give you some swatches not on the swatch model this time just like actually on myself because there aren't really too many shades so i feel like i can pull this off so again this is the baby doll palette which is ari signature neutral mattes and shimmers cute little mirror in here okay first shade no name so the first shade is kind of like a creamy shade very creamy very pigmented very smooth drag not too much is left over on my finger not bad next one looks like a warm champagne shade pretty nice pretty nice Ooh, next one feels a little bit drier. It's the shade here. Pretty, pretty good. Not great, but definitely good. Next one looks like a coppery shade. Beautiful, very metallic, very shimmery. Nothing too unusual here. I would say all of these are eyeshadow shades that I've seen before, but I will say that eyeshadows are pretty soft. I don't even have to use a makeup remover to remove them from my fingers, so that's kind of a nice thing. And the last two shades are both mattes. We have like a medium brown, like a milk chocolate shade. Very nice, doesn't even need a double dip. And the last one, maybe like a dark chocolate shade. Let's see, or like a truffle shade. All right, here we go. Those are the swatches. I'll show you a close up in a sec. I actually do wanna swatch this highlighter real quick. Miss Mercury is the shade, and Miss Mercury is a warm champagne. I do like the print here. It is very dreamy and also very space age-y. <laughs> It is blinding. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous highlighter. Okay, this is it. I'm gonna use my Fenty Beauty Primer. I'm also gonna grab a handheld mirror. I am thinking that I definitely want to be inspired by this, but not necessarily copy it. Just wanna create something that is very Ari. I think what I'm gonna do first is grab a small little pencil brush and this brown shade here, which I called the milk chocolate shade as opposed to the dark chocolate shade. And with my eye open, I'm gonna start cutting my crease. Yes, I'm going right in heavily. I'm kind of like mimicking the shape that she has here, but I'm not exactly copying it. Just creating this wave shape in between the space of my lash line and my brow. It's almost like dead in the center. But of course, if you're following this tutorial for the look, you will have to place yours wherever it looks best on you. All right, so at first impression, this eyeshadow applies pretty well. It's sticking to the primer. It is adhering very well to the lid. Oh, I just realized that on the paper packaging of the palette, there are actually names of the shades. So the shade that I'm using is called Boca Mocha, or maybe it's Boca Mocha, I don't know. Also, this palette is made in the USA from imported and domestic parts. Hmm, good to know. Okay, so now that I've like mapped out my crease, I'm gonna start kind of just smudging that upwards. The same brush, this one is from Huda Beauty, and it's the Eyes Shine and Line brush. Next, I'm gonna take a smaller, denser brush that has some glitter on it, so I'm gonna remove that first. I'm gonna dip into this middle shade here. This one is called Croissant, or Croissant, however you wanna say that. And I'm just gonna glide that right on top of that line, just diffusing it a bit, and just uh, giving it that gradient. I will say that these two shades are a perfect match to each other. So if you wanna blend out the brown shade, this would be the perfect shade to do it with. So the color story, although definitely something that you probably already have in your arsenal, I will say it is cohesive. I'm liking that map out so far. Next, I'm gonna take the lightest shade here. Sweetheart is the name. I'm just gonna plop that right underneath my brow, onto the brow bone, just to highlight all of that and complete that gradient from the brown to the bone white color. There we go. And now I'm thinking I might just need a little bit more of that tan shade just to raise that up slightly, just like that. And just like that. Gonna darken that line once more just to make it extra thick. And I'll leave it at that. So now, instead of copying this look, instead of making it a really bright white lid, I think I wanna do something just a little bit different. I do wanna add the white, because I wanna test out literally every single color. There's only six of them. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the light shade, sweetheart. I'm gonna add that to my inner corner, kinda like surrounding the eye socket, plop that directly to the inner, like third, inner quarter of the lid, and then just blend it out with my finger and with the brush, up, down, bring some light. I will say this is a really nice 
nice pale shadow. It applies very, very easily, very creamy, easy to work with, something that's great for every day. Next, I'm gonna go in with this champagne-y shade, the shimmery one, it's called Sun Baby. I'm gonna grab that Sun Baby and slap that onto the lid. Actually gonna pick that up with the same brush and add to the other eye, but strictly to the center and not really meeting with that line. Definitely applies better with the finger though. The brush isn't picking up as much pigment as I want. So I'm gonna go back to the finger just like that. I think that's cute. And then I'm actually gonna use the sponge from the Huda Beauty brush and grab this bronzy coppery shade. So it's called Biscotti. And I'm gonna complete that gradient on my lid. Again, not going all the way up to the line and kind of winging that out like that. I like that. This is a fun little look, fun little look. Last final touch, I'm gonna grab the deepest shade. Espresso is the name. And I'm gonna sharpen and darken right here near that border and just like gently wing that out like that. Sharpen, darken, wing it out, lift it up. Okay, then I'm gonna grab like a really small eyeliner brush back to the light shade here and just clean up the area right underneath the line. And you see by doing that, I'm actually just sharpening the cut crease and I'm separating the lid shadows from the cut crease. There we go, moving on to the liner. So for the liner, I'm seeing that this is a marker type, but it's very, very pointy. Like the point is shorter than the most uh, marker type liners that I'm used to. But also I'm noticing that the point is very precise. So that's kind of good. I'm also noticing that there's a bit of fallout here with the shimmery shades. Nothing too crazy, but definitely noted. And so what I'm gonna do now is line the top lash line. Well, I will say this marker is very precise, so that's really good. Is it waterproof? I'm not so sure, but I will test it. I'm gonna wing out the outer portion of this eye shape that I created. Not heavily, just like a very fine line. And then I'm gonna thicken the wing and just connect it to the lash line liner, like that. Also going to add just one little element, and that's only because I'm extra. I just wanna see how precise and how fine this tip is. I'm gonna basically outline the outer portion of my shadow, like that. Looks pretty cool. All right, now I gotta do that on the other side. I'm thinking that with such an extreme outer liner, I don't really need to go in too closely to the inner corner. So I'm not gonna extend it. I'm just gonna leave it at this. I like the way that everything is looking. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna test out the mascara, the highlighter, and the lip gloss, and the lashes next. So let's go for the mascara first. So again, this is the volumizing mascara. Not too much of a gimmicky wand, which I really like. I don't suppose that this is a waterproof mascara. So probably not something that I can wear for a long time, but I guess it's okay. It feels very, very clean. Nothing too unusual, nothing that I haven't seen before. Creamy type of mascara, not so much of a liquidy formula. While my mascara dries, I'm gonna go ahead and apply this highlighter. I'm gonna use this Lime Crime brush. Go just a little bit. And let's see, here goes. Well, that is pretty blinding. I mean, I am seeing that on camera and it is definitely reflecting. This is a blinding type of highlighter, maybe even more blinding than I was expecting. So I'm gonna actually take a clean brush and just tone it down a little bit. What I like about it is that it does seem to be very fine. It's not a chunky type of highlighter that's going to emphasize any of your skin texture and a little bit goes a long way. So you don't need to pick up a lot to get maximum payoff. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit on my pinky, add a smidge to my nose, to my nose bridge. I gotta say, I'm pretty pleased. The highlighter is definitely uh, speaking to me. Okay, gloss time. Let's see if this actually plumps. Ooh, there's definitely a scent with this. I think it's vanilla. Feels very, very familiar. And I'm definitely getting a tiny bit of a tingling sensation, like a spicy burning sensation on my lips, which I personally don't mind. Feels a little bit like the Too Faced Lip Injection Extreme, but the gloss itself has like a oily, slippery finish. Lashes are made in Indonesia. Gloss is made in the USA. Highlighter is made in Italy. Hmm. Volumized mascara also made in the USA. So that tells me they got resources. They're using different labs for different things. So that's cool. Okay, so the lash is what initially excited me the most about everything, just because this is a style that I personally really like for myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off like maybe four little clusters from the end, just so this can fit my eyes a little bit better. I'm also going to curl this lash. I'm gonna use this Lancome Lash Curler, just like crimp it once. I'm gonna add my Kiss Lash Adhesive to the band. And this has a clear band, by the way. So that's really nice if you wanna apply your lashes to a look that doesn't have liner. All right, so now let's go for this lash. 
gosh, I am excited. Okay, I have to say I really like the lash. It's a very natural type of lash, but definitely gives a little bit of something to the eye, exactly what I needed because I'm someone who doesn't really have long lashes, but this gives the illusion of longer lashes that I needed for this look without looking super dramatic. And I definitely think that this is a style that you can wear for every day. So, so far I'm really, really liking the lashes. I love the thin band and I kind of wish I didn't cut off as much as I did just so I can have a little bit more here in the outer corner. But anyways, this is my completed Rem Beauty makeup look. I gotta give it up for myself. I like this look. This is a fun little look that is whimsical, current, slightly understated, but also very much statement worthy. I really like everything that I've done on my face today with these Rem Beauty products by Ariana Grande. So now on to my Team Truth style verdict. Well, let's go with like my first feelings. Off the bat, I gotta say, I wasn't like too impressed. I would even go as far as saying I wasn't even too interested in reviewing this product line just because the photos that I saw online weren't like super interesting to me. I wasn't really sure what the color story was. It all seemed like I've seen it before, not just once, but many times before. And it didn't really speak to me. However, upon receiving this package in the mail, I did notice that the packaging of the product does not translate on photos the way that it does in real life. It definitely feels a little bit cooler. It definitely feels more futuristic than what I had expected. So I will give it to them. The packaging, I do really like. I like holding it in my hands. It feels sturdy, but not like too heavy. So it's giving me good vibes, basically. I like the fact that it's silver as opposed to gold because everything lately has been very gold and silver, quite frankly, feels a little bit fresh and different. Now the color story of this particular palette is definitely 1000% something that I've seen before and it's something that I already have in my makeup arsenal. Probably most of you have these shades. Most of you have browns and neutral shades and some shimmery tones that you can use for every day. But that's not to say that this is a bad palette. I thought the quality of it was really good. The fact that I was able to create a graphic look with it is telling. It says that the pigment is there. It's not super chalky. It definitely adheres to the primer and it definitely delivers. Yes, this is a great palette for every day and for $24, it's not bad. I am getting the sense that this line is very much geared towards Gen Z. So even with the pricing, I would say it's not astronomical, even though the theme is definitely very much outer spacey. Am I impressed? Yeah, I guess in certain aspects I am. I definitely am impressed by the packaging. I really, really like the lashes. I feel like if there was one thing that I could recommend, if you're someone who is looking for lashes that you could wear day to night, I really like these lashes. I think they're great for smaller eyes, for Asian eyes, eyes like mine. I really did like those. I'm actually always looking for a style like that and it's sometimes hard to find. So although they're kind of pricey at $16 for just like one pair of lashes, you can wear them over and over again. I did really enjoy the highlighter. I thought it was quite beaming, quite booming, quite in your face, very much not understated, but overstated in the literal sense of the word. It is very bright, but also kind of skin perfecting. So I like the highlighter. I definitely like the lashes. Didn't care so much for the mascara. The gloss, believe it or not, is still stinging, but I don't really see it plumping, but it's a nice gloss, though I have tons of glosses like this already, and I own all the shadows in this palette already. I am kind of excited to see what their next launch is going to be. I definitely want to see more color. I definitely want to see more finishes, perhaps even some brow products. I do think that Ariana Grande is someone who is known for her brows. She is known for her liner look. So maybe some different colorful liners, something more. So let's see what they have in store. So those are my final thoughts, my final verdict. I hope you guys are here for it. Thank you so much for watching and for subscribing. I will see you in my next one. And while you here, go ahead and check out a couple of my other videos, a video that you may like, and also my most recent video. Hit it. I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.